If not for the work of Paul Mardikian, the Hunley might be nothing more than an oxidized pile of dust today. Mardikian is a conservation expert who's helped salvage and save items from the Titanic in the Confederate ship, the Alabama. That's one of the Alabama's main cannons there. Mardikian is a man of tremendous patience. He measures progress in minute detail. The restoration of this cannon is now in its sixth year. Yeah, as long as I get paid when I do it, it's fine, right? This is a long time. Yeah, no, what, what, it's very important to note that there is no other way, there are, there, there've been no ways to speed up that process. You need to reverse the marine corrosion. And as I said, you cannot do that overnight. And as a conservator, I can tell that if maybe treating those cannons takes five to six years, maybe using this technology could reduce the treatment time by 10. That would be fantastic. Because you could get a lot more done, right? You could have a lot more done. The archaeologists would have their artifacts much, much faster. Uh, the funding would be right now available and people would not be They like, wouldn't have to wait so long to seven, see the, the fruits of their seven, labor. Seven years or six yeah. years is too much. Yeah. You know, you cannot tell somebody, okay, it's going to be ready in seven years. Like I said, you could build a bridge with that all. Not a cathedral, but you could build something big for, <laughs> for six years. Mardikian has tackled what many consider one of the most complex artifacts ever preserved in the Hunley. His primary objective was pulling the salt out of her 48 wrought iron plates. Done too quickly, and the Hunley would simply turn to rust. So this is where the science is going mainstream. Mardikian is using what's called a subcritical process, using high temperatures to diffuse the salt buildup there, a process that may give researchers new insights into thousands of American bridges. We used to have two bridges going across the Cooper River. And what is the reason that we had to replace those bridges other than the fact that traffic was increasing? The bridges were beginning to fail. And why were they beginning to fail? Because of the same kind of corrosion problems that we are experiencing on the Hunley. And we have bridges spread out throughout this country just like those. Just like that. It's that kind of real-world application, science from the Hunley eventually being used in other areas, that has many observers keeping a close eye on this Restoration Institute. Will there be enough research spun off from the submarine that will one day be mainstream? The, the, kind of the beauty of some of these public-private partnerships is uh, we're very good at basic science. Uh, we're very good at application science. Sometimes where uh, universities really need help is when it takes uh, an idea that has marketplace application, uh, we need a partner that's capable of helping us move that into the marketplace in the appropriate setting. Someone that can make the investments necessary to scale up a laboratory type of model and turn it into a reality in the marketplace. And someone who actually, uh, of course in the private sector you have people that fully develop products, whereas our people perhaps are most valuable if they stay in the laboratory and continue to work on the next stage of development as opposed to try to think of how they would go out and market something when they historically have not had that experience and don't have necessarily the contacts that would be necessary. This small investment in this project has turned into a big thing. And the big thing is that this Restoration Institute over the next 10 to 20 years, in my opinion, will draw millions and millions of dollars of investment, jobs, research, and will have an impact on the quality of life here in America. What a great mission, and for the knowledge-based economy, what a great thing for South Carolina. And so I, th I think it was just a natural fit, and it started out with us in Clemson at this laboratory trying to look at conservation and salt treatments, and they became familiar with the facility. They had the forward vision of the Restoration Institute. Our vision was to complete the journey of the Hunley and that is to conserve her and get her upstream into the permanent facility. So it just was a natural fit, and it's a great fit for the people of South Carolina because their money that went into this building long as go out lived the Hunley and goes on to create jobs and a better future. It's, it's a unique arrangement. If, if you don't have that arrangement, you're obviously going to cut the corners and you're obviously not going to give a chance to this heritage to be preserved. What's happening right now with Clemson University is a very, very rare chemical reaction. And we want to keep it going and we want to use that to take over complex conservation issues 
large projects and also help the conservation community and the archaeological community to meet their challenges. Clemson's Restoration Institute is already attracting students from all over the world. For those studying areas of archaeology and conservation, working on the Hunley has always been considered a world-class project. But now, the Institute is taking steps to lay out a future that includes covering more than 85 acres of this portion of the old naval base. It's the first step in creating a full-fledged research campus. Uh, it won't look at all like a college campus. Uh, it will be much more like a, a research campus. It will be high technology type of operations here. Uh, my hope is that a portion of the campus will be highly educational though and interactive with the public. Uh, if you go to most campuses, uh, there's obviously lots of activity and lots of young people moving around. This would be more like a corporate type of environment where there will be lots of research going on. My hope is that we take advantage of, of a concept that uh, we've termed uh, edutourism, which is taking education and turning it into something that is consumed by the public, something that they can learn from. If you go to most campuses, you can see the chemistry building, but you don't really know what goes on in the chemistry building. Our hope here is that when you approach the advanced materials building, on the grounds would be things that would teach you about what goes on in the advanced materials building or in the conservation laboratory or in the restoration ecology work so that the campus actually uh, is a teacher itself. The landscape of the campus is a teacher and you don't have to actually see a laboratory to understand what's going on in the laboratories. While administrators go about the business of turning this burgeoning lab into an international center for a whole range of restoration science, researchers here every single day go about the work of bringing the Hunley back to its original form. They can see that original design with the help of white light 3D imaging. With this technology, you can see right through those years of buildup, all the way down to the nearly 2,800 rivets that were used to hold the Hunley together. Um, the, what you see on the exterior of the submarine, the concretion, it is a record of everything that's happened to the submarine as uh, from the time of the sinking, from the night of the sinking to the recovery process and even afterwards. It's a, it's a record, um, a physical record of what's happened in and around the submarine. And so there's so much data. There's uh, stratigraphy data that you see trapped in the concretion on the submarine. There's um, macrofaunal data, which is the sea growth that attached itself to the exterior hull. All of that sort of uh, functions to give us an idea of what happened to the submarine as it sat on the seafloor and, and the conditions uh, as the submarine slowly was buried. Combine that 3D technology with some new supercomputing technologies and researchers can also calculate the stress points the Hunley is under. Let's say they want to move the Hunley from its current resting place, which is on her side at a 45 degree angle. Well, you can see where those red areas light up on the model that the stress there would probably snap the Hunley in half. Engineers are running similar type programs on massive offshore platforms that drill for oil, helping identify trouble spots that might not stand up to the ocean's pounding. By running simulations such as these, the Hunley might one day cough up its biggest secret of all, exactly why she never made it home.